Hello all. How are you? That's been a while. I'm doing something I haven't done in a long time. I'm video blocking. I can't believe it myself, Harley. Um, since the last time I saw you, a lot's changed. Been through a lot, come out of a lot. Thank God I'm still here. I even went out and bought clothes and everything. I'm back. Both on things. Anyway, um, I'm glad to see you all. Um, I'm video blocking because I didn't really have much time to write as I used to with all my work schedule, my internship, interning with the multinational corporation. Hopefully you will hire me. That'd be great. Um, there's a whole bunch going on. Um, I was encouraged to go back into it by a lot of you who sent me letters and wrote things to me asking me you know, where I've been, what's been going on. They kind of missed hearing me or seeing me around. Um, one thing that really pushed it back to existence was I had a conversation with a young man who was about 19 years old, told me that a lot of things that I uh, talk about and went through really inspired him and kind of um, pushed him to go out and kind of be a better person. And when you get involved in a whole bunch of things and just all these other things that happen, you kind of forget what the whole point of the thing that you started. So it kind of had me go back and dig into myself and soul search and figure out, you know, this is kind of what I need to be doing. And I'm really, really sorry that I kind of left it for so long. But I'm back. Um, along with me, I have another vlogger who has been a little lazy himself, a good friend. Come on. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> uh, it's been a long, long, long time. So, yes. I just want to send out the message with this song to show a Wait, play. hello, can like, I introduce oh, myself? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, bad. Sorry. What a Leo. You know who he is. I'm Jared. Jared Schuler. Everyone knows who you are. Yeah, you're notorious for this whole video thing. I'm just kind of like... I'm I know. Nice. I started this, actually. Really? I did. Not a little Richard. Wait a minute, why could it be Little Richard? Well, because Little Richard always says he started everything. Well, he did, just like me. No, I really did start this. You did. You created cameras and... No, I, st I swear. We'll, we'll get into it okay. later. I, I didn't really know did. you started it, but okay. Well, you, you can Google me. You'll... Okay. I've been doing it since the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, playing in the background, that's um, Cheryl Cole, as we know, um, one of the... Um, Founding, but one of the members of Girls Aloud. She's huge. She's in Europe now. Her album actually came out today. Um, the song playing is Fight for This Love, and you know, if anything worth having, as she says, worth fighting for, we're worth fighting for. You are, I am, all of our things are worth fighting for. So, I actually want to start <laughs> off reading a letter. What? What are we fighting for? I want to start off reading a letter. I agree. That someone sent to me. Um, this is not the one, actually. The letter that someone sent to me. Oh, since our last, um, since I've last been off. I've had a chance to answer my letters as much as I used to, but this is a really, really sweet one. Name is Kay. Completely out of blue, I just want to say thank you. Two years ago, my closet self sent you an email wondering how I could get in touch with other gay folks. You applied, BGC, Adam Adam, etc. I met my boyfriend. What? What? I did. I, I met my boyfriend of two years on that site. We're going to grandma's together for Thanksgiving dinner this year. It's a beautiful Wait, I'm story. just asking. Kay needed advice to find boys, and you say Adam for Adam? Because, like, he, would, he was in a you small town. You want to say like, Craigslist, Adam? Like and, Adam for Adam. But I found my now, first gay friend on BGC. But he found a boyfriend. I mean, usually you just find sex on But you know, sites. you can find people. It's all about what you make it. People make online and say all this bad stuff about it. But it's all what you make it. You met me on Adam for Adam. I did not. No, we don't meet you. I don't, I don't, I even, don't even know. What the fuck did I meet you? It was Adam for Adam. I don't know where we met, actually. It was somewhere. Probably a function. Probably one of them, you know, Jesus things. was in the room, though. That's all I know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Sacrilege, sorry. Oh, okay. So, here we go. Now I have another question that we're actually going to get to today. Our main question of the day um, from our... You need to start your girl over? No, we're going to the next thing. Oh, I'm sorry? Yeah, it goes over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, M. Um, you want to read this question? Cause I read like this. nobody's business. Yeah, I'm not good with reading. Name M. I want to simply ask, how you do it? How do you become so comfortable in your own skin? A little bit, thanks. Sorry. How do you become so comfortable in your own skin to be so open and free? I am gay, and while I am, I am not DL or anything like that, I am also not directly known. It's more like a parent's know and a need-to-know basis. I struggle with this at times because I am extremely intelligent, individual in graduate school working on my master's, and then going for my doctorate. I have a lot to contribute to the world, and I often fear that my success will be undermined by A, my race, but who cares, and B, my sexuality. I often feel like a walking uh, contradiction because I love God deeply, not in the religious sense, but just a spiritual connection. <laughs> Sorry. However, I am an abomination according to the Bible. Please, let's get back to that when I finish. It is such a hard world out here for people like us. Let's go back to that too. 
I even I know I know even uh, I know even in your comfort level it is still a challenge daily. Um, we catch so much hell um, from heterosexuals, but our own and also by our own community. I often feel that negative stereotypes of black men. What was this again? Ooh. Juxtapose. 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 I learned things too. As a T word of the day. <laughs> well, he's so intelligent, you know. Um, I often feel the negative stereotypes of black men juxtapose with the he- hatred of the gay lifestyle make it hard for many of us to be, as B. Scott would say, hey, B. Scott. hey boy, walk it out truth. Hence my conflict. After being successful because of how these uh, and others look up to me or model after my success how they would feel. I don't want to shame my family and you, uh, and you will. Bitch, I can't read. I want to shame my family. <laughs> and well, you get the point. Uh, I just want to know how you muster the strength to do what you do. Uh, keep doing what you do. You are a great example of what a great gay man is like and who is living his life. Thanks a lot, M. Thanks, M. That's a really great letter. I appreciate mm-hmm. you saying those wonderful things about me. Me too. But okay. Sorry. It was really me. I know. Um, I was just, I was just trying to be down. All right. Anyway. So, um... I mean, since the first black men the pose on, let's let's go there. I mean, it's just a lot of. I guess as he's asking me, I mean, I don't. How, think how did you I get do anything on skin? special? I just kind of live life and do me. I think I guess because I'm in New York and it's a little more. I would say accepted as more of us here. Well, people, more, you, me and you are native New Yorkers, and, right. and people have to get into the fact that it's rare that you find people like me and Adam. I'm from the Bronx. I was from Brooklyn. Right. And most people that you now meet in Harlem, well, in Harlem, Harlem, all right. right. But most people you feel that uh, did you meet at are in New York, like migrated from different places down south, everywhere, honestly, right. different countries because New York is a place to be comfortable. Um, Adam, I mean, sorry, M didn't say where he's generally from. Obviously, it's not New York. City, I don't think so. Or a major city in general. Um, but. The fact of being comfortable is kind of, um, for lack of better terms, getting over yourself. And it's, it's inside of you to do and just kind of live your life. I mean, I'm gay. I mean, people would necessarily say, oh, wow, you're gay. I'm not like a flame. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think I it's actually like, great. Yeah, yeah, I think the shit, the flames are the ones. Shit. Yeah, they are really the ones who Sometimes I'm like, you better do it, girl, because I don't like bricks in my head. No, but, no and, but I mean, and also, too, I mean, the gay rights movement was started by a bunch of, you know, drag queens that were just tired of the bullshit, so... You know what I mean? Well, yeah, they're, they're the brave ones. I so just think it's a matter of just being comfortable with yourself um, as far as family, just telling people. But you people know, for me, at the ass. end of the day, at the end of the day, my mother Googled me to find that I was gay. And she was like, you're really gay. And I said, well, my mother just asked me and I told her. I figured she came to me. She must know something. Well, she, mamas know. But the yeah. whole point being, and like, and by the way, Em, your mama knows. But I, I think s- he said his parents know. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. It's just other people. He's, uh, he feels like his legacy, which is kind of fucked up. Don't feel like your legacy is going to be fucked up because you're gay. Like, you can't even, like... Well, you know, at the same time, Adam, you have to be realistic and realize that it's it, we're comfortable in our skin, but we do things yes. that we can... Ex- I work in HR, so it's comfortable for me to be gay. Right. Um, but at the same time, every profession is not really geared towards, True. you know, you being an open gay person. You really won't... I don't know what he's getting his master's in or... Or his doctorate, and, and, and you know, I mean, you have to live real. Just because we're comfortable and we can do this, and everyone can know us gaily, right. gaily. But, <laughs> and I also want to address before we run out of time. I want to address the abomination thing. Um, the thing about the Bible is this: is how I feel, my personal feel about the Bible. Um, I think that the my difference between what the average Christians, I'm a Christian, and the Bible and everything is that most Christians would say they believe the Bible is the infallible word of God, all of it. And I would say no to that. And that well, the Bible has been fricasseed and remixed like well, a Devil Cross album. And was, so it, many things have been added to it <laughs> to take away from it. So it really, and I it's just been written by man 200 right. years after you know, Jesus I, is long gone. I depend more upon on my relationship with God personally. And like I prayed about the gay thing and you know, well, we're we all went through that, that so, spiel. But don't you think it's ironic? For me, God, oh that, God. You know, like two sentences me. in the Bible and a book has ruined and just destroyed so many lives. But no one talks about, you know, not eating shellfish and you know, plucking your eye out, all that shit that comes in the Bible as well. I mean, it's unfortunate that we have this one book and these two sentences to really dictate our lives. It ain't much. I mean, you ain't supposed to mess with it either. We all be in hell. Onanism. I, I mean, I don't masturbate. No, I'm saying onanism. That's where the whole spilling the seed, it's, it's a, it's a Have you spilled your seed? Huh? <laughs> Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So to M. My advice is this: how I think of everything, because I can be a little surly at times. I never want to be at uh, at the end of the day. You have like ten seconds. Advertise your blog. Oh, <laughs> his, his daily variety. Go check it out. Just Google me, Jared Shula. 